2 John, 2 Epistle of John, The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I have loved in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. I rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. Okay, as we advance on to Second John verse 4, John has a pronounced enjoyment that this woman that we've talked about and her children walk in truth. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you're going to walk in truth, you're going to walk in the Bible, the King James Bible. You are going to walk the way of Jesus Christ. And John 1.1 1, 1 says the word. Let's go to John 1.1. 1, 1. Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 1. Let's read it because I may misquote it. I don't want this to be misquoted. It says. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word was made, no, try it again, I'm sorry. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word, you run over to First John, is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are not walking in Jesus Christ, the Word, you cannot say you're walking in truth. You cannot. They were doing what God wanted them to do, and they were doing it continually. They were doing it daily. How about you and I? What if the Apostle John was to write a letter uh, to you and I great I rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children walking in truth. Can you say that? Are you teaching your children what is right? What is scripture? And what is sound? Don't, don't trust the modern church. The modern church has clowns and pirates instead of David and Goliath and Jonah and the whale. I have been in churches where the Sunday school material is not the Bible. It is up to you, the parent, to raise your children if you were to know the scriptures. You cannot give your child to a person for at least 45 minutes a week or hand them over to a pastor for three hours a week for three and three quarters of an hour for an entire week. You cannot expect them to put truth into your child. It has to be by you. Mom, and especially dad, because you, the you, the, the man of the family, is the one that God has put in charge of all. The Bible records even for a wife, if she has a question, she is to ask her husband. We are talking about a woman here. We don't know about the father. We don't know about the man in the house. We just know about the woman. And the children walk in truth. 
And that is what John says is he rejoices greatly. He doesn't rejoice because they throw a, a ball into a hoop. He doesn't rejoice because he caught a fly ball. He doesn't rejoice because you, you passed over into a line and, you know, he doesn't rejoice because you can do a certain dance move. He doesn't rejoice because you can spell the, the longest word the longest time. That's not the things that John rejoices in, in a child. He rejoices in a child that walks in truth. And when you do right, it yields great joy. When you do what God wants you to do, the fruit of doing obedience to God is joy. You are not in joy because you are not doing what God told you to do. That's plain and simple. Like my pastor said last night, you can't ask God for joy. Joy because, because you are obeying, you are doing what God expects you to be doing, and doing it according to the Bible. And not some scheme or way that you thought of that is better than what God said. Doing right yields great joy. It is a natural response. Now this ties in exactly what my pastor was saying last night when he was teaching us out of the book of Ezra. Great joy came in 1 Kings 140 when Solomon was anointed king. Great joy. Luke 10.21. Let's go to Luke 10.21. Luke 10, 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things upon the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Here is the time that Jesus rejoiced. Jesus rejoiced in that God was revealing to men what they needed to know. And if you read the verse, he wasn't giving it to scholars. Acts 16.34 And we'll start in verse 31. In verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and his straightway. And when he was brought them into the house, he, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with, his, with all his house. So, the, Phil, the Philippian jailer rejoiced over the salvation granted to him by God. And yes, the Christian can rejoice, the Christian can be happy in the Word, in salvation. And what makes you happy? The world can give a joy, but it's temporal. It is a joy that's not going to last off into eternity. 
If I rejoice in someone being saved today, if I rejoice in my own salvation, that fits way off into eternity where there is no more time. If I rejoice because I caught a big fish, what's that going to be when we've been 10,000 years, even though there's no time in eternity, in, in glory? When we're before the throne of Jesus Christ, we got the cherubim, we got the angels, we're there in the golden streets, and you, you caught a what? What's a fish? I don't remember what that is. Try telling the angels in glory that you took this orange ball and you put it through a hoop. And you got a trophy. Or you you went through the entire tree and won and, and got yourself a ring. Explain that to the seraphim. Explain to the 24 elders that you went illegally and bought a bag or something and you smoked it or put it in your arm or whatever, and that gave you joy. Explain that to Jesus. Explain to God the Father how you bought a lottery ticket, and the Bible says you're not to gamble, and you won. And that money destroyed your life and your family and everybody around you. What do you joy in? What is your joy? Is it because from God that you've done what God has told you to do? Or is it an artificial joy brought on by something that doesn't mean nothing in heaven? Will your joys at the judgment seat of Christ result in tears as it goes in smoke? You know? America has no joy. What joy she thinks she is is an artificial means and is not of the holy. I don't read in Revelation or anywhere from Genesis to Revelation that New Jerusalem has any kind of sports courts. There's no ovals to race around in cars. There's no lines so if we pass and we can't go, we're out of bounds. There's nothing like that. There's no glass. But the golden, the golden street that we walk on is transparent as glass. There's no glass that you can look through the windows and have joy looking at stuff you can't afford or going in with a plastic card and buying what you can't afford. Oh, I got the joy of, of, of a baby, a newborn baby, an infant. And yet that child may be a population of hell. Well, you know how to put water. Yeah, well, that child that's been born that gives you great joy may live in hell for eternity. Or make a walk around the streets of Jerusalem with no crown on their head. That child may grow up and be a terror to you. There may be one time Adolf Hitler's mother and father rejoiced at that little baby that was born. Huh? Yeah. America cannot have joy. For too many rejoice to kill babies. And save the whales. The same people that say save the whales are for abortion. And some of them sit on a church pew Sunday morning. And listen to Lily messages. Two... 
few rejoice at a birth. On the other side of a coin, I talk about birth, but rejoicing. There are too few that when they do give birth to a baby, it's been already thought about handing it off to adoption agency. Hand it off to grandma and grandpa. This thing has become a burden in my life. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. And being in darkness, America, where you say, we don't want you, God. We don't want your word. As we started to study out, how can she take part in the joy of God? How can you have a fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, Ephesians chapter 5 or 6? Say, I have the fruit of the Holy Spirit of God, which is joy, and but you don't want God. How can it be? All that is broken in America, you can't have joy with broken America. What's broken in America? Families are broken. The church is broken. The establishment or foundation of America has failed. For God is not in her thoughts. And you're going to expect as a nation the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I'm not a I'm a prophet when it comes to the Bible. I'm going to tell you that there's a rapture coming. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming for his church. That is sound. I am telling you that there is a seven-year period called the tribulation. The last three and a half years is called the great tribulation, where Satan is going to be the ruler, the leadership, the, the worldwide leader of this world. You're going to have to receive a mark on your right hand or your forehead to, to, to buy food. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming at the second advent. Those things I can prophesy, I can tell you is for sure. Now this is something I can think, maybe, thereabouts. It's my thoughts, it's my opinions, and you don't have to believe it. Alright? There may become a day in this country... That you will not be able to buy your joy legal or illegal. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about drugs. Legal or illegal. You may this country may not have a job tomorrow. We're a trillion dollars in debt. That paycheck you get every week, bi weekly, or monthly, whatever you get. It, it's not worth. I read the other day to make a penny takes almost three cents to make a penny. And with this present health care system that we have now in, in act, you can't afford the doctors because you can't afford the health insurance. You might not be able to get that medicine. Listen, my wife can't get the pain medicine because it has been uh, outruled by the state of Florida and has been outruled by the government. Because people take that drug and they use it for illegal uses. Uses. Usage. And too many people, that illegal or that legal drug... is their joy and you may not have the money to get it you know how much money well take how much money you know how many gallons of water makes beer how much of God's pure water did he give for us to drink or make kool-aid but is turned into alcohol to destroy lives to waste money, and maybe one day God will give us a drought. The Bible says in the tribulation that water will be turning to blood as it did in Egypt. You can't make beer out of blood. 
So that alcohol may possibly be gone as your joy. There may come to a choice, and I, I hate to think of the decision. Either we're going to have water to put in a plastic bottle to sell you for $5 a bottle, or let's turn the water instead of spring water, let's turn it into booze, beer, and sell that. America rejoices at which is against God. You can't even have his commandments in the courtroom. It rejoices against his fruit. His son. And thus the fruit of the Holy Spirit cannot be produced. You cannot get good from an evil tree. Wherefore, by, by, by their fruits, you should know them. What are the fruits of America? What are the religious fruits of America? Listen, the Mormons, the Jehovah Witnesses, and all that did not come from Europe. The charismatic movement did not come from Africa. Rock and roll did not come from Asia. It came from America. The lady of this chapter, of this book, and her children walk, their walk, was right and the apostle John rejoiced in it and not only was it right but it was in truth and like I said Jesus said I am the way the walk the way the truth truth is truth and the life and these children were walking in the truth, so they were walking in Jesus Christ. John wrote in John 14 that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John wrote 1717 the, that the word sanctifies them through thy word, thy word is truth. That was written by John. And the same John wrote, I rejoice greatly that. I found thy children walking in truth. The truth that John speaks of is the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth that is spoken about in 2nd Epistle of John in verse 4 is Jesus Christ. And that's going to be very important when we get to verse 11. If the Lord tarries. I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church. You are not in the truth. I'm a Christian. I don't read my Bible. You are not in the truth. I'm a Christian, but I don't witness to people. You are not in the truth. Plain and simple. I'm, in a, I'm a Christian, and I'm, I'm in another religion. You are not in the truth. Wait till we get to verse 11. I'll read verse 11 now. For he that, bideth, for he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. And some of you Christians out there are taking part of people who are not walking in truth. I don't care if it's your parents. I don't care if it's your children. I don't care if it's your neighbor. I don't care if it's your spouse. I don't care who it is. If they are not walking in the truth, you are to have no joy. You should be ashamed. And more so if it is your children because you brought them up that way. Because you know what the opposite of, of rejoice is? It's shame.
There are many children that claim to be saved or their mother claimed for them to be saved and do not walk in the truth, do not walk in the way, and do not walk in light. So what do you have? You have the absence of Jesus Christ. You have absence of the way. So you are going to Broadway. You have absence of the truth. Believe in the lie that Satan is a liar and the father of it, John 8, 44, and you are the absence of life. You're not saved. There's a great likelihood that they are not saved. And that's nothing to celebrate at. I wouldn't celebrate if somebody I knew and loved did not love the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a born fide, born again Christian that loves the Lord yourself. I, I, I would I'd be ashamed. I would be ashamed if someone takes his takes your dear Savior's name and uses it as a cuss word. I would not want to be around them. I would not want to talk to them. But yet you do. And you'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ and you will give an account. Because your absence of the love for the Lord. And then in, re in return with all that, Say you got God's joy. He says, verse 4, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. Now, what do you think that this, this elect lady, what do you think she feels like as the mother of these children when she reads this letter and says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. What do you think that puts in her heart? I'm doing right. I'm doing exactly what God wanted me to do, and I can see the fruit. And the fruit are in my children, and yes, I joy in my children. Now, I'm not talking about a young child in this thing. I would say a child that would be eight or above. If you got to chase them around the house Sunday morning to get them up and get them dressed and get them fed to be in church and get them out in the car in time, that, that, that's a failure. Those kids should be able to get up on their own, get dressed on their own, eat on their own, and be ready when it's time. If they are not, your children are not walking in the truth. There's something else. There's somewhere else they want to be. Just telling you the truth. Just trying to help you out. I ain't going to sugarcoat nothing. I'm going to put it in your face. And if you don't like it, you can have a problem with God. Because you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, Mr. Born Again, say a Christian. And I don't want you to lose anything. And I sure don't want you to lose your joy. Now, I have been in a few valleys in my life. And in those valleys, my soul has had joy and peace. Even in turmoil. Even though I don't know what the next day will bring. Even though on the outside there's fears, anxieties, and, and overwhelming. Inside, I can soon say I get the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. And do you have joy when you realize you are living in sin and God speaks to you through the Word, God speaks to you for a Christian, God speaks to you through, through the Bible preaching, and you can say, yes, I am guilty, Lord, I am Put it under the blood. And not only that, Lord, I need your help, victory over that. And you get the joy that your flesh doesn't. And when you repent and acknowledge who you are and that you need help and you can't do it, you know what the byproduct of that is? God gives you joy. Joy in what? 
that my Father in Heaven loves me so much that He takes out everybody in the world and says, I'm going to show you what, what is between you and me that's not good, that is not holy, and it's breaking our fellowship. And I love you enough to tell you what it is. And if you don't respond to me, if you don't listen to what I'm telling you, I'm going to have to spank you. I'm going to have to spank you until you get it right. That's the Father in heaven that loves me. And that brings me joy that God in heaven, who made a star a billion miles away, and knows that star by name that NASA will never find, has looked down on, on, on uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, of all places where, and looked down on, on Fairmont Road and called into my heart and says, I love you. I love you enough to tell you that where you're doing right in life and where you're doing wrong in life. And I don't know how many uh, crabs are in the world. I have no idea, land crabs or sea crabs, and yet God feeds them all. God feeds all the tuna fish. I don't know how many. And he counts all the hairs on our heads, all of our hair. And it's rejoicing that God has looked in my life, and you know what? He talks to me, and he walks with me. And that this woman in the second epistle of John, this elect lady, she gets a letter from one of the twelve apostles. The apostle that was beloved by Jesus Christ that laid upon his breast and heard the holy heartbeat. And watched Jesus as he was there on the cross, died for our sins. Saw the resurrected Jesus Christ as he walked in that room. And so, listen, I've never seen Jesus. John has. He's seen the scars. This man who wrote the book of Revelation writes to this lady and says, Your children are faithful and walking in truth. How would you like to get a letter like that? That he rejoices in this woman's children. Now, Let's go a step further. Let's go a step further. I'm going to finish. You are at the judgment seat of Christ. You and you alone. You are staring at the Lord Jesus Christ. You and Jesus. Only you and Jesus. No pastor, no spouse, no parent, no child, no other Christians. They're, they're all around you. But it's you and Jesus Christ. Right now. The rapture would happen right now. Could Jesus say, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth? Can he? If the rapture will happen right now, we will be judged by Jesus Christ. Can he say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? That's what you need to realize in your Christian walk. The rapture can happen any day, any time, any hour. And if you don't do what this book, if you don't do what Jesus tells you to do, you don't do what God commands, you are a failure, even if you are saved and can't lose it. You are a failure. And your failure affects others. And I'll tell you how that happens. I had a real illustration the other day when I was at work. They say one bad apple ruins the whole bushel. And it just happened being produce, and they had a tray of, I think, oranges or something like that. And there was one there that was just all moldy. How it got there, I don't know. You know that one moldy one just made all of the rest of them just, it was a turnoff. That's sin in your life. You may have yellow fruit, good and ripe, 
in your tray. But that one fruit, everybody will see. Everybody will talk about that one. And you cannot, I was going to say, you cannot use an excuse. You cannot excuse. Because if you are a true Bible-believing, born-again Christian, if you are truly saved, you can only be saved by the Word. You need the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You cannot be saved outside this book. So if your foundation of salvation is this book, you can't say, I never knew, because it's written. And it would be to your fact that the judgment seat of Christ, if Christ opens his own book, the book, chapter, and verse, and shows you where it was. I'm the kind of person that believes God will take no excuse. I believe that. And I believe for my own life, where I've sinned, there, there is no excuse, even though if I try to do it. Well, let me ask you. Never mind John. And John, I mean, listen, he's a wonderful character. I'm not trying to put him down. I wouldn't put him down. I wouldn't put Peter down. I love Peter's character. Well, let me ask you. Can Jesus say this about your life? I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. I'll tell you one other child you have too. Not only do you have physical children, but you have spiritual you often have spiritual children. People that you led to the Lord Jesus Christ. Where are they? I had one who has, I led I had the honor of leaving to the Lord Jesus Christ. I tried helping the person out. And he turned away and walked away. I let him go. I had another one I led to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he just totally walked away. You know, you can put a notch on your belt. I got 5,000 saved. I got 56. You can put that notch on the belt. And Paul told Timothy, you are my son, and that, that wasn't a physical son. Because Timothy's father was a Greek. Paul had the honor of leading Timothy to the Lord. As a spiritual father or dad, Paul raised Timothy up in the Lord. Can the Lord say this about your converts? I rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children walking in truth, or you just got them saved and let them go off. So when you come to Matthew, it says, if, if a son will ask for something, will you give him a rock? If a, I forget what it is, but if a son asks for something, will you give him a serpent? You have led somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are their spiritual dad. I mean, they are your spiritual children, and they need truth. And what would you do? Give them the serpent? Did you give them the old serpent? Did you let them go walk off and be in, in failures of Satan? That will show up on your account too, you know. Yes, he led John to the Lord, but he didn't do nothing about it. And, and John fell off to the Jehovah Witnesses and didn't do nothing. Uh, and John fell off, just didn't go to church. John fell off. And um, as a result, John never had the joy because he never was brought up. I ought to do a lesson one time, or maybe I should do a book on what we're going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And it's, the list is. Is vast of what we don't know what we're going to be judged at. And we are lacking joy in our life because we are not doing what God said. We can't do right. We are sinners. 
I'm a saved sinner. I've got to rely on God. I've got to trust in God. And as a result of doing it God's way, all the way. And when I do it God's way, all the way, then comes joy. It's God's way or the highway. And the highway is the road to many, called the Broadway. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee.